Hi to all my beautiful perimenopausal babes. Welcome to my channel, Health by Heather Hirsch. And today's video is going to be the three earliest signs of perimenopause that I do think that you should know about. Now, I've been looking at my channel's analytics as this channel has been growing. So thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing over to the channel. And definitely one of the major topics that y'all are searching for is more information on perimenopause. And and I certainly can't blame you. If menopause is taboo enough, certainly what is perimenopause, this like sister or cousin like other end of the spectrum that we're also not talking about. So this video is gonna be dedicated to the three earliest signs that you might be in perimenopause. Hi, if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. I see patients for perimenopause and menopause in my clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, and I do consultative midlife care. That means I just do perimenopause and menopause day in and day out. So it's a topic I am so passionate about, not only breaking the taboo, but really openly and freely discussing the symptoms that you might be experiencing in perimenopause and into menopause so that you don't think that you're going crazy or you know what happens to a lot of women is they start to see multiple different doctors for what they think are all these different and unrelated things when actually a lot of them do have to um, do with perimenopause and menopause. So without a long intro, let's get into the three first signs that you could be in perimenopause. All right, before we get into that, let's also define what perimenopause is. So we use these terms a lot. We use menopause and perimenopause or postmenopause. We sort of throw these terms out there. What they really are is clinical terms. That means your physician or your clinician, if they're astute enough, can use these terms to describe what you're experiencing a day to day. But there's not always a hard and fast or clear diagnosis, especially when it comes to perimenopause. So perimenopause is the time leading up to your last menstrual period. And you have no idea unless you have a crystal ball. And if so, please leave a comment below if you have one. But without that crystal ball, you'll, you have no way, neither does your clinician have no way of knowing when your last menstrual period is going to be, especially for women who are going through natural menopause. Now, certainly if you're gonna have your ovaries removed or have surgical menopause, then yes, you certainly might know when that day is coming. But for the majority of you who are just wondering if you're having perimenopause, you don't know when your last period is going to be. Now, the average age of perimenopause here in the United States is 47 and the average age of menopause is 51. But perimenopause, because it's the time leading up to your last period, can really start really without any notice and can go until your last period. Typically, or on average, it lasts about four years, but some women can even go up to eight years, and in extreme cases, up to 10 years of perimenopausal symptoms. Furthermore, a lot of women will ask me about lab work. Can lab work tell me when I'm in perimenopause? And the answer is, unfortunately, no, not really. Now, I did a whole video here on how to interpret your labs, but labs are really most useful in demonstrating that you're menopausal, but in perimenopause, because your hormones are still fluctuating, it, it really is just a snapshot in time. And what really helps cinch if you're having perimenopause is your symptoms. So that's why I wanna go over the top three symptoms. The first and the most common for most women is a change in your periods, whether it's a change in the frequency, meaning they're coming uh, too short or they're becoming too long, they're becoming heavier. For a lot of women, that is really common as we get in that perimenopausal stage or some other change, maybe it's consistency, but most commonly it's either in frequency or in how much bleeding that you're actually having. And this is so important that I recommend to anyone who watches my videos or anyone who follows me on social media or sees me in clinic that you do your very best to track journal and document what your bleeding is doing because that is going to give your clinician so much help in determining if you're in early perimenopause or late perimenopause. And I actually did a whole video on how to tell if you're in early versus late perimenopause, which you should also watch, I think, after this one if this has been very helpful. So periods are usually the very first sign that you could be in perimenopause. Now, that's because your hormones are really starting to fluctuate. Your estrogen level is starting to decline at the same time as it's more sporadic. So it's declining and more sporadic, and that definitely can set you up for a real strange or different frequency or heaviness or length in your periods. The other thing too, and the reason a lot of women get heavier periods in their 
40s, which is typically when perimenopause is, is because they may have fibroids. And those fibroids, actually a fibroid is usually just extra surface area. So if that extra surface area is being stimulated by those, you know, sort of sporadic hormone levels, that's gonna cause your periods to also usually be a little bit heavier. Now, you may be someone who doesn't get periods. Perhaps you had a hysterectomy and your ovaries were left in, so you're not in surgical menopause, so you're not getting periods, or you have an IUD placed, or you've had an ablation. You can't use your periods, unfortunately. But that's okay, that's okay. There's still other things that you can journal and track to help you de determine if you could be in perimenopause. Now, the second thing that most people see in perimenopause, and there's more and more research coming out on this, is a shift in their moods. Now, most women in their 40s have a lot going on. It's certainly a time of extreme growth, whether it's your career or it's your personal life. Perhaps you have young children that are growing up or going off to college. You're at the peak of your career. You could also be taking care of your parents at the same time as you're taking care of your children. And so it's no coincidence that mood changes are really common in midlife, but because of those fluctuating and sporadic hormone levels, there is definitely a physiologic reason that women can have changes in their mood in perimenopause. It's often something that we see really commonly. And what I think is that this often goes either undiagnosed or unreported or certainly sort of put to the side, like, oh yes, you're just of course stressed about these things. But these mood changes can be a clear sign that you are starting or you're really in the thick of perimenopause. Now, what mood changes are common well, depression and anxiety are the two most common, but I also have seen, and more recently, whether it's because we're more keen on making the right diagnosis, but more bipolar one or bipolar disorder being diagnosed in women in their 40s. Now, whether that diagnosis is correct, whether it's more hormonal or it's perimenopausal and menopause is you know, still not so much actually the point. It's that mood symptoms are so common in our 40s that I think, and there's more research again being done to show that mood symptoms are actually one of the first signs that you could be in a perimenopause. So if there is a shift in your mood and you notice it, what I want you to do is start journaling and tracking and certainly see if there's any sort of cyclic pattern between periods or when these mood symptoms flare or if there's any triggers or if there's any things that help you feel better. That's really, really helpful because so much of diagnosing perimenopause is clinical. The lab work is just not that helpful, unfortunately. You know, a little bit different than say making the diagnosis of diabetes. We check your A1C, if it's above a certain threshold, you have the diagnosis of diabetes. But perimenopause is not like that. Your hormones are not going to give you a diagnosis or give us more information or give us a glimpse of what's to come. It's it's unfortunately not, and so so much of the diagnosis is based on your symptoms. Now, these mood disorders can also show up as trouble sleeping. So perhaps you crawl into bed and all of a sudden you're up worrying or you're up really early, waking up earlier than normal, worrying, or you're having obsessive compulsive thoughts. Maybe you have you know, made a decision on something, but you keep ruminating, you keep going back to it. And it, it, it is so different than how it used to be in your you know 20s and 30s where you could perhaps solve that dilemma or move on from that. But in, in our perimenopausal years, it can be something that entrenches us so much that it starts to affect our quality of life, the way our interpersonal relationships are going, the way our job is going, and etc. So mood symptoms are really, I think, the second big sign that you could be in perimenopause. The third big sign that you could be in perimenopause is actually symptoms of menopause. And I opened this with saying we use those terms a lot and interchangeably. But menopause is really one year of uh, not having your period and you know then you're postmenopausal. Once you're postmenopausal, you're always postmenopausal because you're not having your period because your ovaries have lost all the estrogen and you're not going to make estrogen after menopause in any significant quantity that you're going to go back and start ovulating. But symptoms of menopause, which is this low estrogen state, really do start in perimenopause. And certainly not, you know, has to happen to everyone, but the most common would be hot flashes, night sweats, and vaginal dryness. All of these symptoms are certainly triggered by 
uh, being in a low estrogen state. So for example, let's say you are perimenopausal and you are 49 and your periods have really spaced out. They're coming, you're skipping months. And in those long stretches of periods when your estrogen's very low, you might be noticing hot flashes or pain with intercourse, which is a sign of uh, changing pH in the vagina. And those are also really, really obvious signs that you could be in perimenopause. They're obvious to me, but they might not be obvious to you because they get missed a lot. In fact, I cannot tell you how many times I have heard the story of someone thinking their very first hot flash was a fever or an illness. And it can get really missed, especially if you just kind of have a fleeting one and it goes away and it dissipates and doesn't come back. But hot flashes, night sweats, and new onset of dryness or pain with intercourse are also clear signs that you could be in perimenopause. All right, so what to do if you are in perimenopause certainly start by talking to your clinician. Now I did a whole video here on how to find a doctor who is an expert in perimenopause and menopause. And if you find that your clinician is not helping you enough, then please feel free to look up one of these clinicians. Now, lastly, again, I talk a lot about this in my course, but lab work really does at the end of the day have very little to do with the diagnosis or the treatment. And so there are certainly lots of things that you can do to feel better in perimenopause. I'm going to link this video here on how to feel better in perimenopause and I do have a perimenopause playlist here on the channel. Now, if you don't know, I know I talk about this in a lot of my videos, but I do have a course, The Complete Guide to Menopause, and this is such a great course truly for women in perimenopause. I do talk a lot about perimenopause, but it also really sets you up for success because it gets you really prepared for that menopause transition on into menopause. When you have a lot of perimenopausal symptoms, there's definitely research and data to show that your symptoms are going to maybe last a little bit longer in through, throughout that menopause transition and postmenopausally. And so this course is going to really set you up to think through all the different treatment options, whether it's hormone therapy or not hormone therapy, and all the other health implications that come along with losing your estrogen, which with transitioning into menopause. So the link for that is down below. I highly recommend you check it out. The first lesson is free. If you want to learn more from me, also certainly follow me on Instagram. I'm at hormone.health.doc and there's a wonderful community of women there who are weighing in on all the topics that you really care about. And so much of what the content that I create and the course that I create is really based on what I think you guys need to know because you have told me over the last couple of years. And so your feedback really helps me to shape what I am teaching you and what you guys are learning. And so it's a wonderful platform over there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video on perimenopause. And I hope you stick around and subscribe to the channel to get all the updates on everything perimenopause and menopause. See you next week. Bye.